All right, welcome everybody to the BH virtual event space. Today we have prize winning photographer Hayden Green here to talk about wedding photography. So if you're new to photographing weddings, this webinar is for you. So with that, Hayden, I'm going to turn it over to you. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. I am so excited to do this workshop. Uh, I remember when I shot my first uh, my first wedding, it was literally like, here, go do it. And I made some mistakes and I learned as I went along. And my hope is that I can take some of the things that I've learned and pass them on to you. All right, help. I just booked my first wedding. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about myself. This is the resume. So you like, okay, well, why should I listen to this guy? Well, first of all, I'm a good looking guy. At least that's what that picture says. And my wife tends to agree with me. But besides that, I am a award-winning photographer. I have been doing this for the better part of 20 years. I am a fine art photographer. Uh, do stuff like the stuff behind me. Uh, but I, my goal is to get my work into your living room. Um, I am a former gallery owner. I used to own a gallery called the Barataria Gallery in Brooklyn. Uh, Brooklyn, if you're from Brooklyn, stand up. And uh, we, we specialize in fine art and providing a space for young artists to, to show their work. I am an experienced wedding photographer. I, uh, so I do, I do uh, weddings all the time. Uh, and it's one of the things that I love doing the most. So you'll hear a lot of people like, oh man, I hate doing weddings because they're tough. And, um, and you have a lot of uh, options to make a mistake. So, but I love weddings, I enjoy doing them. So uh, I wanna pass on that experience to you. I am also a worldwide TikTok dance sensation. Yeah, no, that part's not true. Don't worry about it. Just we'll, we'll stick to the photography thing. Dance is not my thing. I just want to check to make sure that everybody was listening. All right. So this is where I do the obligatory. Here are some of my wedding shots. So you know, I know what I'm talking about. And these are a variety of images from a number of different weddings. Um, for different reasons. And we'll come back to some of these. And some of these are just here to show you that you should, you know, I, I know what I'm talking about. All right. And uh, these are some of my favorite weddings. Uh, but, you know, if we if we're really going to break it down there are tons and tons more that we could talk about. So why are weddings a big deal? Why are they the holy grail? Well, to be honest with you, it is, it, it, it's, it's very, it, it's very tough, right? Because weddings can be so easy to do and they can be very, very hard to do. And so let's talk about it. So first and foremost, they are, and, and, uh, and of course my stuff is right behind here. Okay, here we go, I'll move that. Uh, the most, it's the most important day in people's lives. So when you're talking about an event that's happening, everything that you take a picture of is gonna be significant, right? So this is one of the reasons why everybody gets all caught up about, uh, about weddings because everything about that day, every picture that you take, it, people are gonna look back, it's like, oh, remember this? Oh, remember that? It's a very important day in people's lives. Uh, they are very expensive. People are paying a lot of money in order for you to be their photographer. They're paying a lot of money for the venue. They're paying a lot of money for everything. And so if I put out a lot of money, I want quality back. And so you, whereas the payoff for booking a wedding is that you get a lot of, you know, you, it's a, a big payoff for one day or, and I will go into why it's not actually one day, but it is, it, it, it is also very much a lot, a lot of stress because there's so much money associated with it. There are lots of moving parts of the wedding. Uh, so it's not like just one event where, okay, I come to this one room, I take a bunch of pictures and then I leave, right? So a wedding has so many different moving parts, so many different people, so many things happening that you have to pay attention to, so many people who you have to uh, listen to, uh, and, and more importantly, so many different types of people that you have to take pictures of. And so the, the, the amount of moving parts really are what complicate a wedding. The other piece of, uh, of the thing as to why it's the big holy grail is that it is an opportunity to have 
a ton of beautiful images. There is no event that you will ever photograph where you'll be able to get little detail stuff, big grand pictures, uh, pictures of, you'll get be able to take profile pictures. You'll be able to get portraiture. You'll be able to get action stuff. Like a wedding, there are so many opportunities to take great images. And so it's one of the reasons, that's one of the reasons I love it. it when, when you ask me why I love weddings, the one reason is always that it is always an opportunity to take beautiful pictures. But so you always have that, 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 that uh, going into it, being able to say, all right, I'm going to come out with a really great portraiture and even think about it in that way, or I'm going to do some really great scenic stuff because this wedding is in the mountains somewhere, right? So there's so many opportunities to take a lot of beautiful images. The downfalls about it and, and the, you know, the, the reason why it's the Holy Grail is that you don't have any do-overs. It is not one of those things where, all right, I've posed somebody, I took a picture, I didn't like it, I'm going to do it over. That doesn't happen with weddings. If you miss something, it's gone, right? For the most part, there are situations where you are posing your bride and your groom, but or your bride and your bride and your or your groom and your groom. Uh, but the for the most part, there are no do-overs, especially in the ceremony. Like for instance, if you miss the kiss, the kiss is gone, right? So there is no opportunity for you to say, oh, okay, well, could you uh, just run that back one more time? And because I missed it the first time. No, if it's gone, it's gone. All right. And the last piece about it, why everybody is so always so nervous about weddings is that if you mess up a wedding, if you mess up somebody's special day, if you are the reason that this person does not have a record of the day that is most important to their life, it could ruin you. This is the digital age, right? All it takes is one bad tweet or one bad review uh, for your business to go under. And so, on the, uh, the flip side of it, if you do a really good job, you tend to get more business. Like, you know, as, as people go, they have friends who get married all at the same time. So if I had a good wedding, I pass my photographer on to somebody else who's going to get wedding because they did a good job with me. But you do a bad job and you're done in the industry. It's really easy to lose all kind of credibilities with, you know, messing up just one wedding. Uh, and that's not to scare you, but that's the reason why this is such a big deal, right? It's unlike any event that you will ever, ever shoot. And as a result, you should do a number of different things to actually prepare for it. So let's talk about preparation. When you start working on a wedding, you should be thinking about the wedding weeks ahead of the wedding, if not months ahead of the wedding. And this is where your preparation starts. All right. So the first thing is you need to make a list and, and use a checklist. So what when we talk about a checklist, we're talking about all the different things that you want to do in that wedding, all the different things that you want to achieve. So from the day that you get booked and the bride and groom or the bride and bride and the groom and groom or, or the couple tells you, hey, we're getting married in Wyoming in the mountains or in City Hall or uh, at Central Park. There are a bunch of things that will start to go through your, th your, your mind. How many, how many shots do you wanna take? Where do you wanna take these shots? What are the different ways that you wanna represent this, this, uh, this wedding? And that's important because you need to have a checklist of all the things that you want to that you want to go through with your with your couple because the conversation before the wedding will determine how good of a, a set of pictures that you have going into that wedding all right you, you want to have at least two consultations with your couple before the wedding two why and, 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 and I always say couple because a lot of people get caught up into whoever is the main person for the wedding. If it, you know, if it's a bride and they focus on the bride or, you know, they, they focus on the one person in the relationship who is guiding, but two people are getting married, right? And you need to be able to pull both of them together so that you have some, some opinions on both sides of it. I've seen way too many times where you have a conversation with just one side of that couple, you get to the wedding and you start 
taking pictures. And then all of a sudden, the second part of the, the couple comes up to you and is like, hey, I was wondering if you could also take a picture of me and my boys over here or take a picture of me and my girls over here. Because that conversation didn't happen before and it didn't happen with both, the, uh, both parties of the couple in the room at the same time. And why do you have, why do you wanna have two, um, why do you wanna have two consultations? For me, the first consultation that I have with you, we're gonna talk about what your concepts are. Uh, what kind of wedding do you want? Are you a very traditional uh, couple? Do you want everything, is everything straight laced and buttoned up? Or are you uh, doing something that's a, a little bit more chic? Uh, and, or are you blowing it out? Is it a massive wedding? Am I gonna need to hire four photographers for all of this? Um, are you doing something a little bit more rustic where I, you know, I, I want to take uh, pay attention to the details a little bit more and less about the big grandiose, um, the big grandiose pictures. Uh, are you doing something that's a little quirky? Are there things that are going to happen in the wedding that I need to pay attention to? That's the first consultation. What then happens is that you take that information and you start building a lookbook for them. And a lookbook can, can take whatever form you want to have it. So it might be your own work and you send them to your website and say, look at this image, this image, this image. Or I personally keep a running Pinterest of wedding images from everywhere in the internet. And, and I only pick pictures where that, that I actually know that I can recreate. And, um, and and I've, I've been at this for a long while, so there are very few things that I have no idea how they did it, right? So most of the times I'm taking pictures, I'm uh, choosing pictures that I know that I can recreate. And then I have another Pinterest of, of my own work where um, I love these pieces and I'm like, all right. So I send both of those Pinterests, those Pinterest boards to the couple and I say, review this. Because a couple may think that they know what they want but when they start to look at it and they're like, oh, okay, well, I want to see these pictures. And we start to analyze what it is that it, what goes into creating that picture. They may realize that that's not what they're looking for at all. The other piece of it is they may come into it with an eye, a style design and haven't looked around enough and giving them these examples will then set them down another road. So you may have a whole different idea. So now when you come back to it on the second consultation, you are now having those discussions about what, what they liked, what they didn't like. That second consultation is very important. Why? Because a lot of times a couple will pick a picture that they think is beautiful, but you as the photographer know that that picture is not an easy picture. Right. Uh, they may think that it's really simple. It's like, oh, you just took the picture. And you as a photographer know that it takes a particular type of lighting in order to achieve that. Uh, you may need a particular time of day in order to achieve that. And if the wedding's in the evening and it's a, a you know, a, a golden hour picture, you're not going to be able to get it. Um, it, it you know, uh, there may be pictures where uh, there may be stunt pictures. Pictures, so uh, things that were done in Photoshop and the the particular couple doesn't realize that certain things were Photoshopped in order to get that. They, they think that it happens naturally. So that second consultation will tell you, yes, I can do all of this stuff. Um, here is what it will take in order to do it. And sometimes what that means is that we're taking pictures before the wedding because they wanted something really stylized or um, we are not, uh, they're not going to be able to have, uh, to interact with people during the, uh, the cocktail hour, because that's when we're out taking pictures. Um, or it may mean that they see the bride before the actual, so all of these things now come up in that second consultation, because you started to have a conversation about what the pictures are and what it'll entail to actually achieve them. And that's where you discuss all of the logistics. So a lot of the times when you are talking about all the, the different types of pictures that you are trying to achieve, you as a photographer know what the setup is gonna be and you're gonna communicate that in the second consultation. And that information then gets sent over to the venue. 
because some things you need permission in order to do. You may need a permission from the city in order to shoot in a park, for instance, or you may need the venue to clear out a, uh, a parking lot in order for you to take these pictures so that you don't have, so you have unobstructed views. Having that second consultation and going over the logistics long ahead of time so that the, the, the site and the, the, um, the couple has an opportunity to work out the logistics. That's important because if you make a decision about an image that you are going to try to, to uh, achieve the day before the wedding, and then all of a sudden you can't get it done because it's not enough lead time for the logistics, there are going to be unhappy people. So my suggestion is do this way ahead of time. And last but not least, long before, what I need you to do is establish a shot list. Now, if you've ever worked a, if you've ever worked an event, you know what a shot list is. It's a list of all of the images that are must-haves. So you coming into a wedding will probably have a bunch of images that you know you should get. The kiss, the walk down the aisle, the bouquet throw, uh, the bride getting ready, the groom getting ready, you know, all of these different things you know that you're going to have to check to, to get. But the couple may also have a bunch of uh, images that you they want you to, to take. So Uncle Louis coming to the to the wedding and he hasn't left his house in four years. Um, little baby Sandra is coming to the wedding and she's now 32. I need to have a picture with her. Uh, if you see um, Bob and Betty actually dancing with each other, make sure you get that picture because they haven't spoken to each other in 40 years. So those are shot lists that will come from your client and your client will be, your client should direct you this is what I am looking for. I'll give you, I'll tell you the one thing about the way that I shoot weddings. I am not a wedding photographer that goes around to each table, tells everybody to get up, right? And um, and take a picture. I'm, I'm gonna take you, uh, I'm gonna take a picture of you as you are interacting in the wedding. And that's very important. And so you, during the wedding, or sorry, before the wedding, I need you to identify who Bob and Betty are, right? Because I'm not taking a, I'm, I'm not doing a, a a list of all of the people who are there. I'm not documenting all of the people who are there. I am capturing the moments as the, as they happen. And if Bob and Betty actually do get up and start dancing, I need to know who they look like, right? What they look like. So establishing your shot list and establishing what you're looking for is very very important. All right. So so that's weeks before. Uh, you actually have the wedding goes off, right? Um, and so I, I wanted to put this picture up because when we start talking about how you um, how you plan out your wedding, how you plan out your shot list, there are certain things that are easy to take and certain things that take a lot of preparation. The picture on the picture on the right of the screen of the uh, portraiture, that is a, a picture that is done really that's done in post. I took took it with. Um, a lighting from the window, and I was able to adjust that in post. Doesn't take any kind of preparation ahead of time. I look around and I see that that's what the lighting is and I take the picture. But if you look at the picture at the bottom with them approaching each other and getting uh, you know, their transparency, getting closer and closer, that picture takes about a half an hour to get done because of the fact that you have to take the pictures and you have to line it up in a way that you know you're going to edit in Photoshop later on. All right. And so knowing, so if your bride or your groom looks at this picture and says, oh, I want to recreate that, you need to be able to tell them you need to carve out at least 15 to 20 minutes of me being able to walk you back and forth. And this picture was done in the, and it was a rainy day. So like we, you have to be able to know this is going to take a little bit of time, and we can't just do it in a time that is uh, allotted for your um, uh, your cocktail hour. Okay. So, the day before the wedding, the day before the wedding, you need to consult your checklist. Why? So, if you are doing a dragged shutter speed um, shot where there's water around your one of the couples, right? you know that you're going to need your filters. 
And if you don't, if you don't have your filters, you need to be able to go out and get one. So being able to have your checklist and say, I need filters for this shot. Got it. Check. Um, I need extra batteries because it's a cold weather, because it's a cold weather uh, event. Got it. Check. Uh, and so all of these things are going to go into, go into your checklist. And all of these things are going to be uh, the things that you're going to be checking the day before. And I'm saying all of this stuff has to happen the day before, because what happens, and I'll, and I'll get to this about testing your gear, is what happens is that you put stuff in the bag like the week before, and then something happens in between the wedding and that, that, that day that you prepared, and you're like, oh, I'm just going to grab this out and I'll put it back. And you always forget to put it back, right? So consult your checklist the day before. Lay out your gear and test it the night before. So are you going to test your gear beforehand a, a, a week ahead of time? Yeah, sure. Because like, say, for instance, if something is broken and you need to replace it, you're going to need that lead time. But retest it the night before. Electronics are famous for failing right when you need them the most. So at the very least, you want to make sure that it is working as close to the event as possible. Fire all your, your, um, your speed lights. Uh, take all your strobes out. Make sure that everything is working properly. Find all your cords. Make sure the cords are working properly. Test everything, every single thing, before you pack your bag the night before, either the day or the night before. You want to have the confidence that I just checked this yesterday, right? Because if you put it in your bag and you're like, oh, I checked it a week ago. It was fine. It may not still be fine. Electronics are fickle. Trust me on this one. Test your stuff the day before. Uh, the other thing that you want to do is make sure that you pack a lens for detail work. So detail work simply means uh, the rings, the lace, the little the little itty bitty things that that really make up the fillers of any wedding album. So so backing this up all of the images that you create are probably gonna end up in a wedding album, if not also online somewhere, right? So uh, people will share these images and some of the images may end up in their video if you have a videographer that is working with you. So all of the, the little nitty gritty stuff, um, detailed images of the cake, uh, uh, detailed pictures of the, uh, of, of the rings, of lace, of, of, of you know holding hands and stuff like that, those things are important. And so you want to get yourself a lens that is 55 millimeter, 50 millimeters or lower. Uh, you want to use extension tubes if you have them to get in really close. If you have a macro lens, that's perfect for that. So make sure you pack a lens for detail lens, for detail work. It will save your life and you will you will stop you, you will stop yourself from having to like take a picture with a 70 to 200 of you know of rings that that then don't show the detail that you want them to show. Next, clean your sensors. I'm going to say this one more time. Clean your sensors. You have no idea how how much time taking a half an hour and cleaning your sensors and make sure that there is no dust or little bits of dirt on your sensor will save you in the editing process. There are I have spent <laughs> oh, I have spent hours and when I tell you hours uh, photoshopping out one little dot on every single picture because there was a speck of dust on my sensor or on my lens. Sensor more importantly, but definitely the, uh, uh, sorry, uh, sensor more imp importantly, but definitely clean the lens as well too. But clean your sensor. Take a couple of test shots. If you see any kind of debris, get that off of there. And on a typical wedding, I will shoot about a thousand images. If I have a, a, a piece of a piece of dirt on my on my sensor that I did not know about, that means that I am spending time cleaning a thousand specks of dirt off of the, the resulting images, right? So clean your sensors, also clean your lenses. Last but last but not least, last but not least, pack a breakfast bar. Uh, so you want to have so when you get when you start off with the wedding day, 
you will not you will not know the next time that you will be able to eat right so shove a breakfast bar in one of your pockets in one of your bags so that if there is not an opportunity for you to grab something to eat that you are not famished the, you don't want to the last thing you need to be is hangry right you don't want to be at a wedding and so hungry that you can't concentrate on what you should be doing right so pack a breakfast bar stash it somewhere where you will be able to access it if there is a lull in a program you know just nosh on it so that you keep your wits about you when you're on the day of you want to make sure you have a good breakfast so that you are you know moving forward that is of course if it's a daytime wedding but you want to have a good meal before you head out to the wedding because again there is no i you have no idea when is the next time that you will actually have something to eat all right so now it is the day of the wedding is today You've rolled up, you've got everything packed, and you show up at the wedding, all right? Uh, if you have booked, so a lot of times you will book the wedding, uh, sorry, the, the, the couple will book you for the prep time. Uh, more often than not, you're there while the couple is getting ready. Uh, if the, for those of you who are being booked for just the ceremony to the reception, uh, this probably doesn't apply, but some of it does. All right. So the first and foremost thing, establish a rapport with the bride and the second in command. So here's the two things. The first thing you want to be, you want to recognize, and if this is your first wedding, you won't realize it, but you are not just a photographer that day. You are a therapist. You are in charge of, uh, you know, solving problems. Here's, here's why that, that, that this is true. Out of everybody who is there that day and outside of the people who work at the actual um, facility at the venue, you are probably the person who has seen more weddings than anybody else. So this is your first, so you won't know, that, you won't know this, but if this is your first, they're probably thinking you've seen a bunch of these. And so what will start to happen is, whereas you think you should be taking cues from the couple, the couple will start asking you, hey, what do you think we should do in this situation? And sometimes it doesn't have anything to do with photography, it has nothing to do with photography. And you know, like, hey, should I have this person in the shot or should I have this person walk me down the aisle? It's like, oh, look, man, I don't know your family. I don't know what the dynamics are, but you become a counselor. You become, you give information and, and your expertise because like I said, after you start doing this a while, you're the one who has been to more weddings than anybody else in that room. Um, and again, but they won't know that unless you've told them that this is your first, your first uh, wedding. But they still lean on you as a as a uh, as a as a as a counselor, um, and you need to lean into that role. Why? You need to make sure that the bride or the you know, the couple is happy, because your pictures will reflect where if they're in a bad mood. If they're in a bad mood, your pictures are going to look crappy. So your goal is to keep them laughing, keep them happy. Make sure you tell them that they look beautiful, that they look handsome, that they look exactly the way that they're trying to look, right? Make sure that you assuage any issues about the way that they look in a wedding gown or a tuxedo or a suit tux. What, you know, make sure you make them feel that they are the most beautiful, gorgeous, handsome person in that room on that day, even if you don't believe it. <laughs> All right, I'm not telling you to lie. I'm just telling you not to express your 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 uh, your actual opinions, right? But you want to make them feel great, all right? You also want to make sure that you identify who is the second in command. So if, if you are hired by uh, one of the the couples, so you know in heterosexual relationship, if you're hired by the bride, you want to make sure to find out who is the bride's second in command or you know, if it's two grooms, you want to make sure whoever hired you has identified who the second in command is. Why? The couple is busy getting married. They're not going to be around to answer any kind of questions that you may have. You may need to know uh, whether you can get up in the balcony in a church. You may need to know um, how many people are in 
uh, the wedding party or, or if somebody was a no-show, the, the couple's not gonna have the time to answer those questions. The second in command is definitely gonna be that person. Now, that may be the maid of honor and that, that, that's her duty of the day, or they may have hired a wedding planner, right? So make sure you identify who the second in command is and make sure that they are just as happy as the, the couples are, because that will determine whether or not you have a good, a, a good set of shots. You also want to identify who the wedding, who the wedding uh, coordinator, the venue coordinator is, right? That is really important. They will generally identify themselves to you for two reasons. Number one, you're going to need to have uh, you're going to need to have insurance, uh, and this is, you know, uh, photography 101. So if you're shooting weddings, you should already have insurance. So I didn't feel like I needed to address that, but you should you need to get insurance in case anything happens. They're gonna to wanna to know if you have your insurance, uh, if you haven't forwarded the rider to them, by then they, they just wanna identify who are the people in the space. And they're gonna figure out who you are first so that they know where to put you and where to tell you you can have access to, right? So, and this will happen both at the ceremony place if it's different than the reception place. So you, you'll need to look for whoever is coordinating both of those venues. This will, also, this will also be the person that you need to ask whether you can, like I said, go up on the balcony if you're in a church or uh, if I can go behind these uh, uh, pipe and drapes and, and take a picture from this side. So all of the things that you need access to, that person is going to be the one that you ask. And you want to make sure that you have a good relationship with them because sometimes, and you'll see this in a later slide, sometimes you need to get to some place that you probably shouldn't be. And the last thing you need to be is arguing with somebody in the middle of a wedding, right? So get on their good graces, introduce yourself, um, make sure that you they that they have an idea of what you're trying to achieve. Um, and then more often than not, they'll cut you some slack. They'll even uh, be your best advocate like or, or, or your best resource. Like for instance, if you run out of battery somehow um, and you know for a speed light or something and they may have some sitting in a drawer somewhere. So I've had that, that situation and really leaned on that event coordinator. Bring an assistant. This is not a second shooter. So weddings are very difficult. And there are a lot of, as I said, a lot of moving pieces. You should bring an assistant with you. You're getting paid a decent amount of money or you should have been getting paid a decent amount of money because weddings are difficult. So you, you should charge accordingly, right? Bring an assistant with you. And, uh, and again, this is not a second shooter. This is literally somebody who may be holding some extra lenses for you. So, and somebody who knows what they are. So you may say to them, hey, hand me that 70 to 200. And in that moment, they should not be asking you, what's a 70 to 200, right? Um, or you may say, hand me the, my second body. And they, they, they should not be looking around for an actual human, right? So Find somebody who knows this, the craft, somebody who knows the jargon, the technology. And so, and, and, and that person might be there to hand you stuff. They might be there to hold the light. They might be there to um, fix the dress on, on um, one of the couples. Um, they might be there as a second set of eyes. This is the really important piece, right? So they might be there as a second set of eyes where you're taking a picture and you don't realize that uh, one of the collars on one of the groomsmen is a little bit askew and they can see that because they're also looking at it. And it's like, oh, wait, hold up, let me fix this. Because if you see it in post, then all of a sudden you've got a whole bunch of things that you need to Photoshop. And, and again, that's annoying, but having a second set of eyes really helps you. But get yourself an assistant. Uh, and you don't have to pay them a whole bunch of money because, again, we're not talking about a second shooter. We're just talking about somebody who is there for you so that, you know, if you need somebody, like, for instance, if you need to send somebody to the store because you need, a, a you know, more batteries. I'll go back to the battery example. You need more batteries. That, that That's that person, right? So you're not leaving what you're doing in order to make that happen. So bring an assistant. Set up your lighting schemes. 
when you get to the place, the minute you get to the place and you've identified the vending coordinator, find out where everything is happening. Go walk the entire venue where everything is happening. Figure out what lighting you're going to need. Will a speed light work? Will you need to be setting up something on remote on, on remote uh, with remote triggers? Are you going to have a um, uh, a strobe somewhere on in this room uh, to augment some of the lighting in here, right? So figure out what your lighting schemes are ahead of time. You will not, you will probably not get uh, an opportunity to do that a whole lot of time ahead of time, right? So there are very few weddings and, you know, that you are able to get in like the week before and they'll, and they'll set up the room exactly lit the way that it was, that it will be for the wedding, you more than likely will not get that opportunity, right? So uh, walk the rooms, walk the setups, and see what lighting you're going to need. Bring your camera, take up, you know, fire off a couple of practice shots. Also, here's a really good pro tip. If you have, if you take your camera with you, set it up, take a bunch of shots of the of all of the uh, of the areas that you're going to be shooting in as reference points, right? Sometimes you may need to grab that picture that you took when you were doing the walkthrough and use it in Photoshop to scrub somebody out. Uh, trust me when I tell you, I've had to do it a bunch of times. But because you have those images that you put to, that you took while you were doing the walkthrough, now you have the background image that you can use in Photoshop to more easily scrub somebody out of an issue of, of an of an image. So walk the setup, set up your lighting schemes, make notes if you need to. So if you set things up and it's like, all right, I'm shooting at 160 here, and and, and I've got my strobe set up at quarter at quarter power and it's this high off to the ground or at this is the spot. So make some notes so that you remember as you go back because there's a lot of stuff that's gonna be, a lot of stuff that's gonna be uh, happening and you may not remember everything. All right, so now we've, we've gone, we're done with, with the prep time and uh, we're into the ceremony. This piece of advice will save your life. Go out to where the guests are at the ceremony and have a conversation with them. Talk to them about the fact that you, not them, are the hired photographer for the day. The, the, the couple is looking for images from you, not the guests, right? I can't tell you how many times that it has been, I've had to Photoshop out somebody's iPad who is sticking out into the aisle or somebody is jumping in front of me while I'm doing portrait work with the, you know, with the couple because they want to get their shot. Make an announcement or get the, the maitre d' to, to make an announcement or the wedding coordinator to make an announcement that the photographer is the one that is hired, not the guest. The, the couple is looking for the images from the photographer do not get in their way, right? And, and this is very, very important. Um, I, and, and, people, and you can, you know who the infract, the people who are the infractors are. It's the people who are sitting on the aisles and they bring the iPad Pro and stick that bad boy right out as somebody is walking down the aisle, completely ruin your shot, right? Having the conversation beforehand will solve that problem for you, hopefully, unless you get a jerk. And I've gotten a jerk, but say, make the announcement. All right, focus on the groom too. And this is a bit sexist, but the point is focus on the, the person who didn't book you, right? So if it's a heterosexual wedding, focus on the groom too. Uh, it, it, you know, if it's two brides, focus on both brides, focus on both grooms, right? Make sure that both parties get equal footing in your, in your uh, photography. And this has to do with the uh, prep time as well. Uh, I, I have seen so many times where, uh, you know, one party has all the pictures and the only time that you see the other party is when it's the I do or, or, or the kiss or the exchange of the ring. That's the only time you see that there's another party in the, in, in the pictures, right? So focus on both sides of the relationship. Uh, 
because what will then happen is that both people will be invested and you'll have a happy couple as opposed to one happy client. It is very, very important. Um, and, and one of the things that I, I tell people all the time, and this works better if you have a second shooter, but whoever's walking down the aisle always gets all the attention. Take two seconds, turn your camera to the person who is standing next to the officiant and take their picture. Take the picture of their face when they see their partner walking down the aisle for the first time. It is priceless. And when they come back with your pictures, they, your couple will say, yes, I remember how I felt in this moment. And that's your goal. Your goal is not a record of who attended their wedding. Your goal is to remind them of how they felt on that day. And when you, when you focus on both parts of the couple, that's something that is easy to achieve. Move around. Uh, so if you don't have a second shooter with you, and most of the weddings that I do no, don't have a second shooter, weddings move slow. They seem like they move fast, but weddings move slow. Move around. Uh, if you have keys in your pocket or you have jingly stuff, put them away during the ceremony. But like, go to the back, take a wide shot, come in tight, get, you know, change your lens, pull, you know, get, get a um, zoom in. Right, move around, get a different get get a, get a different point of view. Sit on the corner, right? Uh, again, see if you can get up in a balcony. Move around. Weddings move really, really slow, especially weddings that have a um, a, a religious ceremony attached to them. And remember, you are taking still images. So when you take a picture of people kneeling down in front of an altar, for instance, it, you won't be able to tell whether that was when they were saying prayers or when he was delivering the homily or where they were getting ready to say their vows, right? So move around, the pictures will, it moves slowly so you can get there. Do not be afraid to move around. Just don't make a bunch of noise while you're doing it, right? Just take the jingly stuff off and get to different, different points of view and get different vantage points. And last but not least, hydrate, 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 drink water. It is so easy to forget that your body is also, especially if you're doing a summer weather, weather uh, wedding, drink water, drink, uh, make sure that you hydrate over and over and over again. Um, you know, you're going to be able to go to the bathroom. So don't worry about uh, I'm missing something because you're, in, you're going to the bathroom, but you need to hydrate. You will pass out if you don't hydrate. Uh, so hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. All right. After the reception, if you are going, if, if you're doing the reception, uh, there are a couple of things that you need to know. Most wedding planners, uh, most, yes, most couples build in a meal for their vendors. When you find whoever the venue person is, they will tell you what time that meal gets served. It's normally when everybody is served their main meal. Uh, and they'll also tell you where that is. And you go in, scarf it down. Um, make sure that you eat when you are being when when it's time for you to be served. Because if you do not eat at that time, they'll take the food away. But more importantly, don't think that you're missing anything during when main course is served. You do not want pictures of people eating. They'll all get rejected, all of them. If you take pictures of people half spoon and, and like, you know, they're all gonna get rejected. Take five minutes and go get, you something, go get yourself something to eat, right? And so um, just pay attention to that one time during the main course. And like I said, the, 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 the venue coordinator will let you know exactly your meals are ready, they're over here. When you come to the reception, even though you did a walkthrough the first time, redo your lighting schemes. Venues are famous for changing the lighting mid event, right? So they're like, oh, you know, it got dark outside. So we added more lights or now we have these gelled lights and everything in this room is pink, right? So <laughs> Redo your lighting screen schemes. Take a few minutes. When you get to the reception hall, go see what it's like. Rethink your, your lighting schemes because if you're using the same setups that you have from before and everything has changed, your images are going to come out crappy. When you are down, when you are done with the wedding, after the wedding, 
as soon as is humanly possible, download your images to two places immediately. So get them off the cards immediately. So put them on your either your hard drive on your computer or your portable hard drive. If you have a, uh, a digital storage um, system, download them there as well. So upload them to your Dropbox or if you have uh, space on your website, upload them immediately. Why two? If you lose them, if you lose one, you want to have double redundancy. It will save your life. Trust me on this one. But at the very least, get them off those cards immediately. Cards will, you know, cards get corrupted very quickly. Um, and especially when like it's the end of the night and you're throwing things in a in a bag and maybe you you threw a card and you didn't put it in the holder properly and it got dented get them off the card as fast as you possibly can and get them into two places double redundancy will save your life and last but not least send a thank you email to your client send, so even if you're up late at night it's grab all your images Find one that looks really good, that doesn't take a lot of editing. Do, do a little bit of a tweak to it. Add a, you know, maybe a logo or something like that. Send them at least one image as a sneak peek. It will do wonders for your client relationships, right? And so what will happen is that they'll sometimes maybe use that image as like, hey, I got married, everybody. Look at this one image. More to come later on, right? And people are like, oh, my God, who is your photographer? And before you even send your full batch of proofs, you're probably getting a bunch of referrals, right? So get, take the time. Do it like that night or at the very least, the very next morning. It does not take a lot of time. We're talking about one image. And if you are looking through your images as you're taking them, you know when you got a keeper. You're like, oh, that's the one I'm going to send the, the bride and groom uh, or the, the couple later on. Right. So uh, send an email with like one sneak peek image. And, um, and, and, and I guarantee you it'll do a lot for the relationship with your client. Last but not least. Be honest with your client. If this is your first wedding, even if you are the best photographer at street photography or portraiture or whatever it is that you were doing, and this is your first wedding, you need to know what your limitations are. If you have never done something before, don't tell clients like, yeah, I can figure that out. Don't figure stuff out on somebody's wedding. You do not want to do that. Know your limitations. Be honest with your client. Hey, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I know how to do that, but we have a lot. This is why you do the consultations, right? We have a lot of lead time. I'm going to go practice that image for a couple of weeks and I'll get it done. Pat, if I'm having trouble, I'll let you know, be honest. Don't tell somebody that you can do something and you cannot do it. Right. All right. What questions do we have, Danny? All right, Hayden, that, that was really awesome. First, I just want to say, you know, that, that was super informative. And, you know, I, I've dabbled in, in some wedding photography also, um, you know, second shooting and whatnot. And, you know, I, I feel like there is so much pressure riding on that, you know, one event, um, like you talked about at the beginning of the presentation, you know, you were saying how, um, you know, there's so much pressure about missing the shot. Let's say somebody does miss an important shot. How do you go about moving forward and moving past that it depends on which shot it is that you missed right so if you missed the kiss be honest hey listen my camera malfunctioned right as you were taking the kiss um can we just go back up to the altar and just redo that kiss and we'll have something that looks like what it was but unfortunately i missed the actual kiss just be honest because if you don't take the moment to say I screwed up, I missed this. And then, you know, you go back and it's weeks later and the, and, and the couple is asking you, hey, I, I noticed we don't have a picture of us kissing, what happened? And now there's nothing you can do about it, right? At least in that moment, you can say, something happened, I have a fix for it, let's do this. And then the client can get, get on with their day and you know that you at least have something that you can work with. Like, again, it's, with the kiss, you can crop in really tight and you and and blur everything out. And that'll be that'll be the picture of the kiss. Right. Or 
uh, if it's the bouquet, some things you can redo, right? So like if they throw the bouquet and you missed it, just have them throw it again, right? It may not be the actual bouquet that, that's being caught, but you can have the motion and you can add that to your set. But again, just be honest, stuff happens. Technology and, and electronics all fail at some point in time. And if you are honest with your client, you'll they'll understand because again, they're really interested in getting uh, they're really interested in getting married, right? So um, so they'll pass that on, they'll pass on that uh, if you're honest with them. And sometimes uh, it, it, as long as it's one time, it's like if every five minutes like, oh man, I missed that again. Can y'all do it again? Yeah, no, then you're getting fired. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I guess take responsibility. That's really that's really all you could say. Yeah, um, and, don't wait, and don't wait till it's all over, like in the moment. So that if you need to like stage it, just to say something. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's great advice. Now we had a um, we had an interesting question come in from a Zoom viewer about uh, education. So uh, they said that they're currently learning um, wedding photography from YouTube, and they're asking if they if you would advise if they do a workshop or certificate program to learn more, or and if so, which which program would you recommend? So this is news to me. And, and, and apparently I need to get in on this. There are people doing workshops on how to do wedding, wedding photography. I, I, I think you're sitting through one now. <laughs> but if you are, if, if you are paying money to get, that, that's a tough one, right? I'm never gonna tell people not to get more information and not to get more knowledge. Um, but I think that the stuff that we just talked about is your baseline, right? And everything else is photography acumen. If you don't have the photography acumen, you shouldn't be doing weddings. But once you have that, the stuff that we just talked about will get you there and everything else will come with practice, right? Do not, I would say to you, don't take on a 500 person wedding as your first wedding, right? Um, but just as you get, as, as you do more and more of them, you'll get more and more practice. I don't know that a certificate program is going to, without the actual practice of doing it, is going to do much for you. Um, I think that because there's so many moving parts, you can't ever really map it out. And every wedding is different, right? Um, the only thing, the thing about wedding is all about timing. Uh, like you start to listen in for the word, right? You know, Oh, the priest just said this. They're about to slip the rings on. The officiant just said this. Here comes the kiss. Um, the DJ just talked about all single ladies to the floor. Oh, that's the time for the 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 um the the toss, right? So it's all about timing, and none of that stuff comes with training. I think all of that stuff comes from experience. Um, I would always, as you just said, um, before I do my first wedding, and if you can, be a second shooter somewhere else. So you kind of get the timing down. Um, and that's what really being a second shooter is about. But I don't know. I, 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 I'm I, always leery of like a certificate program for something that is best uh, best served with more experience. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. I, maybe I need to be off offering a certificate program myself. Hey. <laughs> There's an idea for you. No, I mean, I think I think it's it's um, it's all about you know what we always say. Just go out, go out and shoot. It you, there, there's a certain amount of information that you can retain without you know actually having experienced the thing. So yes. So yeah, um, and we have a question from Matt um, asking which camera mode do you set for weddings? Are you on AV mode or full manual? Um, generally, through uh, the generally through all of the prep time, I'm full manual, right? Uh, when it comes to the ceremony, because we're talking about timing, sometimes I'll do it on, on aperture, sorry, uh, shutter priority, uh, because I know that I don't want any blur, right? Uh, but if I've set my lighting and my lighting is not changing, I've got a nice consistent, like I'm not outdoors, we're indoors, the, light, the lighting is not flickering, I'll stay on manual, right? Because my lighting is steady and I know what, you know, I know wh where I'm getting my light from um, and I'll stay on manual. My default is manual. Um, I actually, <laughs> one of my cameras, the dial broke, broke on manual. So I can't shoot anything else but manual. I was like, oh geez, God is just like taunting me now. That's really saying something. <laughs> <laughs> so 
so I can't shoot anything else but manual on one of my five Ds, right? And so, uh, but yeah, my default is manual. Uh, but if I do take it on a priority, it is going to be shutter. Um, and that's because either like it's a windy day, uh, stuff is moving all around, the clouds are coming in and out and we're outdoors. I may go to shutter priority because I'd want to make sure I don't have any motion blur and, and let the camera take care of the other stuff as it starts to fluctuate. Awesome. Well, Hayden, looks like we covered everything that came in. Thank you so much for such an informative presentation. That that you you really you really fired me up. I gotta go find the wedding for me to shoot now. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I've I've been so deficient. Like over this 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 uh this quarantine has driven me driven me crazy. I. I, that's, I, I literally tell you, it's my lifeblood. I love doing weddings. Um, the images that come out of it are so beautiful and the connections that you make with, because what then happens is that you shoot somebody's wedding and then next thing you know, you're shooting their baby shower and then you're shooting their maternity shoots and then their, their newborns and their family. And so you all, you become part of their family if you do a good job. So I miss that. I do miss growing with my clients. Uh, so I can't wait till outside opens back up and I get to do it again. Yeah, awesome. All right, well, thank you again, Hayden, for joining us. And uh, we, we really appreciate it. See you later. It was, all, it was my pleasure. Thank you to all you guys for watching. And we'll, we'll see you next time at the B&H virtual event space.